Today we are closing the book on one of our oldest and most ludicrous grifters and con men than we've ever seen before, aka Brian Rose. He's one of our most ancient fake gurus, and a lot of you, if you watched sort of at the beginning of CoffeeZilla, you watched this man's whole career explode. He went from this sort of uh, well-respected interviewer who was kind of coming up in the wake of Joe Rogan, right? Trying to copy a lot of the stuff he was doing. And then somehow d during the vid, his brain fried and he started talking about censorship, David Icke, uh, which, you know, I guess if you want to do that, that's up to you. But then he started also censoring people himself. Like he became one of those censorship bros who was also totally intolerant of anyone being the slightest bit critical of him. And so, look, I documented this extensively on my platform because it sort of intersected all of the things that I think are funny. One, people who love to basically say, like, you can't censor me, but also at the same time say, like, I want to censor you. But also, he crowdfunded money for something he called the Digital Freedom Platform. You said he was going to build it on top of blockchain technology, all these things that never ended up happening. He said he was going to sue YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Um, anyways, I documented how that a lot of that stuff never happened. A lot of this digital freedom platform wasn't real, or at least not in the way he described it. And now his career has sort of exploded since then. I, I mean, in, in like sort of the, uh, not in like the doing really well way, more in like the oil tanker way, um, which look, I'm, I'm not here to, to celebrate by any means. I'm just stating a fact. His channel got removed from YouTube for a lot of the, uh, ostensibly the, conspiracies he was peddling on YouTube that he should have put on his freedom platform. I thought that was the whole point of the freedom platform. I don't know. So either way, I had kind of tapped out of looking at Brian Rose, okay, of London Real. Uh, but recently, I got shown this clip, and you have to understand, at the time I showed it, I wanted to cover it. I just didn't have a place to cover it. And the best part about The Void, the part that I love the most is that it allows me to finally cover all the small topics that I never got to in the past. So this is sort of, I, I feel like it's going so full circle for this channel. I get to revisit our oldest or one of our oldest and biggest grifters, Brian Rose, as he talks about how his channel got deleted from YouTube. Something that normally, you know, I, I'm not going to celebrate or anything like that. But when you see the full context of this, it is absolutely unbelievable. So the context for the clip we're about to see is we're going to watch Brian Rose himself uh, discuss cancel culture, his personal experience, how he got removed from the platform. And then we're going to watch as he gets confronted for doing the exact same thing to someone else. And we will see how well he responds. What do you do now, Brian? In this film, we will not be silenced. What is your strategy as, as you, you know, look ahead? Yeah, well, first of all, all crazy ideas that end up becoming amazing innovations in this world stop, start out as sounding like stupid and crazy, from democracy to the steam engine to the internet to artificial intelligence. And so if we don't allow that discussion to happen in an open and honest way, we're literally depriving humanity. I mean, you could argue humanity only is where it is today because we've had this open and honest debate. Huh. Okay, that's the classic, like, um, no censorship kind of stance. Hey, we just, the steam engine, the internet, what else did he say? <laughs> Light, I don't know, <laughs> whatever else he said. The point is, you need to let open and honest discussion happen. How are we going to do that if they're taking down my conspiracy videos with David Icke, right? So, okay, whatever you think about that, it doesn't really matter because now Brian is about to be challenged on his uh, own stance on this because it turns out he censored people in the past. Find that out. Great to have you on the show. You've had Brian in your sights. Why, why was that? And, and what do you, how do you respond to what has happened to, to Brian's channel in, in recent times? Well, I mean, overall, I'm very worried about censorship on uh, the whole issue is so complicated. Uh, the, the reason I was critical of, of uh, uh, and I'm still critical of what happened with Brian, is that he himself has censored. I mean, when he was running for mayor uh, way back in 2021, uh, you know, a group of school kids interviewed him online about his campaign, and they were, they were starting to ask critical questions, which is pretty good for 15-year-olds. And, um, uh, and they, their interview with Brian was 
brought down, for, went up on YouTube for about a minute, and then it was blocked on copyright grounds. And then there was an argument went on for a few days, and eventually they managed to get it back, uh, back up there. Um, but, you know, London Real were using, they were arguing that the interview was Brian's copyright, or their copyright, and therefore they had the right to pull it down. Whereas anybody knows a political interview, that the copyright on that belongs to the people doing the interview. And, the, and Brian was embarrassed by the questioning, and uh, he's embarrassed you know, by people asking about his business practices. I have to let Brian respond yeah. to that right away. Yeah, I don't remember us doing that. What's Okay, Brian. <laughs> yeah, right, bro. See, this is what I've always been waiting for. This has been, um, if you guys don't know, Brian is very afraid of confrontation. The entire time that I made videos about him, I was like, dying to actually confront him in person. Um, but so this is a dream of mine. I'm like living vicariously through Michael Crick right now on calling him out on the most basic hypocrisy of his whole like digital freedom. We have to let ideas flourish for the steam engine to exist. And then you're going to take down a literal school child's um, podcast with you because they start calling you out. Their channel, by the way, is called Politics Relaxed. I'll link them actually below this along with the original video. Um, if you want to go see it, they're actually, re it's really incredible what they're doing. And uh, and yeah, yeah, let's let's see Brian squirm a bit. I have to let Brian respond yeah. to that right away. Yeah, I don't remember us doing that whatsoever. Uh, you don't remember the argument? No, I remember the interview, uh, but I don't remember any type of censorship allegation. Look, this was a big story at the time. It was covered in all sorts of places. Uh, I don't believe it when you say you don't remember it. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about. This is what the all these people do. They just deny basic facts and just expect people to believe them. And then, and this is the key, they try to move on. All these people, when they get caught out on hard questions, they'll go, I, I don't. I don't remember that. I, 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 don't, I don't recall. Okay, so anyway, I want to talk about, and they go back to this talking point they've been going for, like, hey, can we talk about how I'm the victim again? Can we talk about how bad I have it? ...about was our digital platforms allowing us the right to free speech. And when we give that, those rights up to people like YouTube, to potential in an online safety bill. That's yeah, well, let's really talk about this, 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 this case here, right? Good. Okay. You, you, you used, Good. you claimed that the interview, these young school, school kids, right? School kids. I did all uh, the uh, you, interviews you, during the mayoral campaign, so I'd uh, have to go back and check. Well, uh, look, this is bogus. Wait, I thought he said he remembered the interview. Now he's saying I did 50 interviews as if he doesn't remember. What do you, <laughs> bro, <laughs> such cope. I love though that he has to sit here and take it from Michael Crick. <laughs> and I will say, um, I love these like hard nosed, you know, English reporters. They're built different, dude. They won't let you get away with stuff like this. Although you're about to find that um, the main host kind of plays defense for Brian in a way I really dislike. But Michael Crick doesn't want to let him off the hook. I mean, this, there was a big fuss about this at the time. Okay. And, you know, uh, when we get we, to our age, we, our memories aren't mean, great. But in this case, I mean, okay, well, let me say, do you think it's wrong then that you, that interview you know should have been taken me. off? You know who censored me was the BBC not inviting me on their show. Stop talking about why you're a victim, Brian. Talk about what happened. You answer my to question. Debate against six yeah, you're candidates. avoiding the question here, Brian. That's where the censorship You're avoiding was. the question here, Brian. Do you think it's right that... Uh, London Real, working, which is your company, we don't have the power exercise to censor copyright. People. We don't have the power to censor this, people. Well, you, both, you, yeah, but the, both, you, both, you claimed the interview was your both, copyright, both of, and it we're then not came, get, came we're down. Not get to the yeah. of this Wait a second. This is the most interesting part of the thing. Don't move on. This is what I don't like about the interviewer. He's trying to move on. It's like, this is the best part of the whole. Everything else was boring. Because yeah. there's clearly a, a, a disagreement. And what I'm saying is that this is not really the first man to talk about what? censorship because he has exercised censorship himself. I, I would say that, you know... Thank you. They all talk about censorship when it's them. They're getting censored. They're all, they all hate it. They go, this is unethical, this is whatever. The second they can put the screws on somebody else, they love it. They actually love it. And by the way, the podcast they're all talking about, it. this is it. I decided to pull it up because you have to see it to, <laughs> to believe it. Um, essentially these kids are calling him out. You can see the other guy here uh, for, for his digital freedom platform and he storms off. So the idea that like, I don't remember. And then he took it down under copyright saying my image is my copyright or something. So the idea that he doesn't remember this is pretty hilarious. Confirm or deny that. I have over a thousand guests over the last 10 but years. You had they all have, you had they have a variety of points of view. So, so you, they have a variety you, of points of view. 
So just to check, yeah. you are you're denying that David Ike said this, or no, they, um, they have a variety of points of view, and I respect. He's on repeat. He's literally on like the record skipping. They have a variety of points of view. This is, they have a variety of point. You can actually see him also going to the top of the uh, Zoom window to try to click off of, <laughs> click out of the call, try to leave the call. This is how much of an intellectual lightweight Brian Rose is. You have, they have a like variety of business. points of view. So, so you, they have a variety you, of points of view. Look, he's going. To, look, there he goes. There, uh, looking for the in call button. Just to check, yeah. you are you're denying that David like said this, or no? They, um, they have a variety of points of view, and I respect <laughs> their right to say it. And you, also, and also the comments. You've deleted comments off your channel that are even vaguely, that are even vaguely against what you're yeah. doing. They, they're yeah. saying like you. We have a we have a social them. media team that monitors that. Again, we well, we, we don't believe in hate speech, speech and right. we don't believe in anything that incites violence. Right. So, so as as my publicist said, I've, I've actually got a commitment. Look at him! Look out! So we're just He's... after the hour. So Howard's just giving me a shake here. So let's uh -huh. pick this up at another time. This is not going well, Brian. This is, your clock's getting cleaned by a bunch of uh, teenagers. <laughs> So, so that's the co that's the full context of that clip. That's what he's claiming. I don't remember, which I promise is not true. I think he has nightmares about that clip. Um, but anyway, so going back to this, the interview, this is what Brian has to say when he's called out about this. Apologize then to, to Felix that van der Geest. Would you like to take I, this I, opportunity minute, Michael, to I, apologize to him Brian, for doing that? Brian disputes schoolboy. Brian disputes that version of events, and we're not going to get to the. Well, he hasn't explained what the version of events is because he doesn't. We're not going to get to the bottom of it if you keep interrupting them. Remember it. It's, we're not going to get to the bottom of it. This is a, a basic disagreement yeah. over a specific incident. But can I... To, to well, I mean, he might like to take the opportunity and express sympathy yes. with Felix, Felix van der Geest. A school, he's still a schoolboy. He was only, you know, he was, hadn't even, wasn't even in his GCSE it's, year it's at the time. To say that yeah. You're disputing that, sequ that, that account of that sequence of events. And as I say, we're just not going to... Well, yeah, but, I mean, he could express sympathy, couldn't he? Because yes, he had he something taken down off YouTube as well. His interview with Brian Rose, which mysteriously was taken down. And, well, it's not mysterious. It was taken down on copyright grounds. Would because you, London you Real were exercising, guys? were claiming the copyright belonged to Brian. this is the problem with YouTube. They can choose Well, express sympathy then down. with... Oh, the Dutch! It pisses me off. It pisses me off as much as it gives me satisfaction to watch all of this happen. Because on the one hand, I'm very satisfied watching Michael Crick um, tear into Brian. On the other hand, watching Brian be like, this is the problem with YouTube. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, it's so good. No, Felix I Vandegas. clearly cannot tell them what to censor. No, but, but why don't you express sympathy with Felix There's something Vandegas. wrong with that. Do you, you know, if I was in this situation and this had happened to be me, discussed. happened to me, I'd be hugely embarrassed and I'd be saying, Felix, give me his number, I'll ring him up, I will say sorry to Felix van der Geest. Mr. Rose is not doing that. Why? We're just going to get stuck here. Let's, mo let's just move this call. Well, we are, because he's refusing to... Okay, I have a, a theory that this guy's on the payroll. That's not confirmed, not true. I have, I have no evidence for that. But um, very strange the way he went to bat for Brian Rose. But that that is what Brian Rose has been up to lately, and it puts a big old smile on my face. Not only the fact that um, these kids cleaned him out, but also the fact that now he's being called out for rightful hypocrisy on this whole issue because he says he's such a man of free speech he's such a a, a man of you know the digital freedom platform and then in actuality he just wants to censor children who disagree with him even when it could have led to the invention of the steam engine so yeah that's basically it uh it's super an old video it's a super old video but i never had time to cover it on the main coffeezilla video uh channel and i just figured in the void finally i have the opportunity to be as absolutely petty as I want. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. Goodbye.